how do I find zine makers that make zines and where can I get zine supplies and what do I do if I have so many zine ideas but so little time to make them? Hello, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here and you don't know who I am, um, I'm just Brie. I'm just some girl on the internet that likes to share my zines and things I know about zines. And if you don't know what zines are, they're just magazines you make yourself. But unlike traditional magazines, they're cheap to make, DIY, so they tend to be more arts and crafts coded rather than professionally produced. And they're all about expressing yourself, sharing information in an accessible way, and having fun. So it's 2020 and you, or, or it's not 2020 what the heck it's 2024 and you're inspired to create these little things called zines that you learned about last year and you don't know where to start you're like how do I find zine makers that make zines and where can I get zine supplies and what do I do if I have so many zine ideas but so little time to make them well don't freak out I'm here to help you and I want to share exactly what I do if I started making zines for the very first time these are some of the things that I just wish I knew when I started making zines six years ago and you guys this is just my advice this is not like a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. I know everybody's different, but these are just five things that I wish that I knew. One of the biggest problems I faced when I first started making zines six years ago was gatekeeping. This is when people know a lot of information about a certain thing, but instead of sharing that information with you, they'll just hoard all of it for themselves. I don't know why people... Actually, you know what? I have a theory of why people do this. I think they just want to feel special, and they don't really like when um, people get up in their special interest or something I don't know that's just my my idea of it because why else would you keep information like I do the opposite of gatekeeping where I like if I'm interested in something everybody knows about it Anyway, I faced a lot of gatekeeping when I first started and um, I'm gonna go off on a limb and say the reason why I was gatekept in my community was racism I don't really see those people around anymore, but that's very telling. But anyway, 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 I'm getting off track. For example, if you're not really familiar with what gatekeeping is, gatekeeping would be something like me asking someone where they got their zines printed. And instead of them telling me where they got their zines printed, then they would say something like, Oh, it's just this little hole in the wall. Like, I forgot the name of it. You, it's really hard to find. You wouldn't know. It's just some random little shop. Really, nigga? You don't know where you got 200 plus zines printed? Or I'd reach out to a zine maker in my community and ask them for advice on how to get my folds flatter on my zines. And instead of telling me that bone folders exist to help me flatten the creases and get really good folds on my zines, they would say shit like, A real zine maker would already know how to do this. Yes, you guys, I was gay kept from bone folders bone folders. Like I said, I don't know why people were being so mean to me when I first started. I could have been really annoying because, you know, that's another aspect of my personality is that sometimes I miss social cues. So maybe I was annoying. Like maybe it was me, but I don't think it was me. <laughs> I'm not saying any of this to scare you. I don't want to deter you from asking people for help in the zine community because a lot of people are actually really nice. This is just an example of what happened to me and why I share so much and why I want to encourage all of you to share what you know. The zine community is very small, so I can understand why some people are like, this thing is already so special to me. It's already so small. It's already so niche. All I'm saying is sometimes when things are special to us, we want to protect them. We want to cherish them. We want to keep it for ourselves because it's something that makes us really happy and we don't want anybody else interfering with our happiness. Maybe that's a reason why some people gatekeep, but all of that to say, there are a lot of cool zine makers that will help you on your journey and are willing to share their process or just share what they know about zines. And I'm going to link them in the description. These are zine makers that really helped me on my zine journey when I wanted to give up, when I felt like I had no one to turn to, when I needed some advice, even well into my zine journey and when I gained you know, a little bit of a following. These are people that helped me and welcomed me with open arms and were very encouraging and helped motivate me to keep creating. So, so I want you to follow these guys because their kindness really helped propel my zine journey and I think they will help you too. So look in the description for the zine makers that I'm going to list. And this is all a preface or an intro to my first 
tip that I would give you guys. So the first thing I would tell you to do as a zine maker, a new zine maker in 2024, is to follow a lot of zine makers. You can start with the mutuals that I listed down in the description. You can start by following them if you want. Other ways that you can find zine makers online is by exploring the zine hashtags on Instagram and TikTok. You can also just search through YouTube and find zine creators on there and then just subscribe to their channels. By following other zine makers and befriending them, I think it really opens up the zine community and helps encourage us all to share our creative process with each other. If you're excited about zines, just imagine the zine makers you come across online. They're just as excited about zine making as you are, so when you end up befriending them and becoming mutuals with them, I think it really inspires people to fight against gatekeeping. I'm not saying that everyone should share every single minute detail about their zine process. I don't even do that. That's exhausting. Building community with each other is so so important because surrounding ourselves with like-minded people really helps motivate each other to keep doing our thing without even realizing it. Follow people that make zines and just see their daily life, see, see life through their eyes. It really inspires me. For example, Neta Bomani is one of my favorite zine makers in the community today. She makes such interactive work that informs me, entertains me, and inspires me. And there have been several times where I felt really bad about the work that I do and I'd reach a state of burnout and lose all motivation to create my zines or make videos. And there was one particular time in my life where I just remember I was like in bed for days. I was just really upset about the state of my life. I was really rethinking my career as a content creator and as a full-time artist. And just, I spiraled into a weird state. I was just really negative about my work and about my zines. And then Netta posted to Instagram. The first thing I saw to get me out of this funk, right, was that she made this heart-shaped zine locket. It was a wearable zine. She made a zine and put it around her neck. And this zine featured a photograph of Gwendolyn Brooks and her poem, Truth. And Netta made it in such a beautiful way with yellow and gold vellum paper that she wore around her neck like a true necklace. Seeing that zine and how much obvious effort and care and attention to detail and love went into creating that cured me and out of my funk in a way that I don't think any medicine ever could. I was so in love with this piece that Netta created and I felt like it really helped me regain a sense of purpose in my own work. Seeing her work reminded me that I love what I do. I love making zines. I love paper crafts and the reaction, that visceral admiration that I had for Netta and her post and her work was something that reignited that in me. I was like, oh, I want people to see my work and feel that too. So what I'm trying to say is that Netta and other artists like me and you have really no idea how much of an impact we have on other people's lives without even realizing it. It's not that we actively try all the time. Sometimes we're just sharing our life. Sometimes we're just sharing our zines. And You'd be amazed how many times people have told me that they were inspired by something silly I did. Like something that I thought was just me goofing around has changed and inspired people. And that's what Netta did for me. Like, I don't know if maybe that zine necklace was as special to her as it was to me, but it really inspired me. And that's why I think it's so important for us to continue sharing our work with each other, with other zine makers and to follow each other because you never understand or you never realize the deep impact your authenticity has has on other people that maybe don't even follow you. Maybe they just come across one of your posts and they see that and they like the kind of work that you make. That could inspire them to want to make their work too and have the courage to share their work with the world. So follow other zine makers, keep sharing your work because you could be digging someone out of depression. You could be helping someone out of a funk where they're unsure of their, their path in life or if they should do art and then they come across your posts and you change their life. So so I know that that sounds like a bigger deal than what it is, but it, it, it's a big deal. Me being so depressed about my art and then seeing Netta's post, that was life-changing. I know <laughs> maybe I'm just really sensitive, but it really inspired me. And that's the power of community. That's the power of the love of the craft. You know, that's why we do this. It's not about making a ton of money. It's not about a bunch of clout. It's not, it's not about any of that stuff. It's about sharing your heart with the world. It's putting your heart on paper. And then and posting that shit and telling the world, hey, this is my heart. This is me. This is what I love. And I think there's something really, really special about that. 
Okay, moving on. And yes, uh, I just want to say I am in my car because I was craving a um, Baja Blast from Taco Bell. And I did have this time to make this video, so I'm sitting in my car. Yes, I am. Okay. Anyway, on to tip number two if I were to start making zines for the very first time in 2024. And that is I would take my ass to the dollar store. I just want to remind everybody that you don't need fancy tools or equipment to make a zine you don't you could get every single thing you need to make a zine at the dollar store every single thing let me say that again let me say that again you can get every single thing you need to make a zine at the dollar store everybody's dollar store is different obviously this is the dollar store that i go to it's called the dollar tree and these stores have very extensive craft sections i don't think many people know about it so i need you guys to see this you can find so many things here to make your zine and that's saying for mini zines folio zines art book style kind of zines if you want to be really simple with it or really extravagant with it you can find everything everything at the dollar store and tip number three for what I would do if I was a brand new zine maker starting to make zines for the very first time in 2024, that is I would keep a journal for all of my zine ideas. As much as I personally would like to create when inspiration strikes, that's not really productive for me as a freelance artist. I can't just sit around waiting for an idea to pop into my head. Most times I have to be really productive in a short amount of time. So just because I have to produce a lot doesn't mean I have to make soulless art that I don't care about, you know? That's where the journal and the notebook comes in handy because then I could just revisit this and find ideas that I'm super passionate about or was really excited about at one point in my life and I could revisit visit it and execute it later. You know, we all know that the incubation period of allowing an idea to grow can take up a lot of time. It's it's just a part of the process. So journaling my ideas saves me all that time and now I can use the excess energy towards actually making the zine rather than thinking of what to make the zine about. Moving on to the next tip I would give as a beginner zine maker in 2024 is just to read a lot of zines. Just read, 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 read a lot of zines. I know it sounds very simple, but when I first started making zines, I was so obsessed with my own work that I just forgot to take the time to explore other zines that already exist. I think it's important because when you read a lot of zines, not only are you participating in the zine community and learning a lot of stuff, but you can assess what you like and what you don't like in a zine. Someone like me has a lot of zines because I like to make a lot of zines. And I think you do yourself a disservice if you create in a vacuum. If you want to get more involved with the zine community and you're really new at this, like you're just starting to make zines this year in 2024, I would encourage you to read as many, 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 many zines as possible. This is going to help you with your work. It's helping the community, yes, but it's also helping you. I mean, think about it. Do you think that really great authors go their whole life without reading books? Or do you think people that make movies avoid going to the movies and watching movies? No. So as a zine maker, I think it's really important that you consume a lot of zines. Like I keep saying, it's not only to support other zine makers and be involved with the community, but it helps you learn more about your art process and what you like in zines and how you want to incorporate what you see and what you like into your own work. You will come across zines that you hate. That's a given. There's plenty of zines that I just did not like or didn't jive with, but those experiences help me learn what I won't put in my zines. For example, over the years I've learned that I don't particularly like zines that are too text heavy. I used to, and I used to make a lot of them, but, and this is just my own personal preference, but when I'm reading a zine, I don't want to feel like I'm reading a book. I want to see images. I want to see visual elements, color, crossword puzzles, checklists, collages. I'm the type of zine maker who enjoys a mix of things in a zine because I just think zines like that are interesting to flip through. And I want to see handmade work with glue stains and smeared ink. I want to see janky ass zines, you know, that that's just what I like. And because I like to consume and read zines that are equal parts text to images and have a good balance of seeing a picture and reading a poem or reading a journal entry, I tend to make my zines like that. If you're familiar with my work, you know that a lot of my zines are made in an arts and crafts kind of way. They're really messy. They have a lot of like white out marks and crossed out words because I make a lot of mistakes. So I like my zines to look like a human 
made them. And this is not me shading other types of zines. There are several, so many types of zines out there. And that's why I think it's important to read a lot of them because then you'll find your groove. You'll find what you like, like I did, and start making your zines just like the ones that you like to read. Other people love zines that are primarily filled with text and that's okay too. So those who read text heavy zines will probably be inspired by them and make their own zines that are filled mostly with text. No genre of zine is better than the other. There are just lots of them and everybody's different. And I like to think of zine genres as like going into a library. You go into a library and there's like a young adult section. There's a fiction section. There's a historical section. It's the same thing with zines. There are informational zines, fanzines, per zines. They're just all different types. So I think you should really just expand your knowledge, expand your, your readings of zines and just find your taste. That's all. You can't find your taste unless you consume and read a lot of zines. So just start reading a lot of zines. And if you're like, okay, but how do I do that? You can visit your local library because a lot of libraries now are starting to have zine collections. But if you can't find them at your library, try checking out a small bookstore, like a local bookshop of small mom and pop bookstore, or you can try a record shop. A lot of record shops have zines too. And if you can't find anything in your community locally, look online. There are a lot of zine archives where you can read PDFs of zines for free. I'll link my favorite one in the description where you can read a bunch of zines. It, there's a lot of zines that are just available at your fingertips. There's really no excuse not to read zines. So look in the link in the description that, or look at, look, look for the link in the description for the zine archive that I'm going to link Oh my gosh, I'm saying link a lot. Oh my god, okay, okay. You can follow zine makers online and read their zines directly by DMing them or purchasing their zines or offering up a trade or you can, you know, <laughs> look at that link in my description. And since we're talking about making your own zines, that leads me into my final bit of advice of what I would give a new zine maker starting to make zines for the very first time in 2024. And that is to make zines for yourself and not for the algorithm. I know this is cliche advice, but it's true. And this is coming from a zine maker that has been making zines for a while and has experienced what it's like to make zines before the algorithm. Or at least maybe the algorithm was there, but I just wasn't aware of it. I don't know. It was the algorithm algorithming back in 2016, 2017. I don't know. This is cliche advice, but it's advice I would give over and over and over again. And I mean it. I'm serious right now the algorithm. Stop trying to serve the algorithm and instead serve yourself and your audience. And who cares how your audience looks right now, whether you have five followers or a hundred thousand followers. Create what you like to create and then share it with those people. And trust me, you'll grow. You'll grow that way. If you're making what you like to make and there's people following you because they like seeing what you like to make, they'll share that with people that will also like what you like to make. Like, it, am I making any sense? I feel really excited right now, so I might be talking really fast and maybe in broken sentences, but I'm, I'm just really, my blood boils my blood boils when I hear other zine makers and artists complain about the algorithm. There are so many people I've unfollowed this year because I didn't feel like they valued me as a supporter because they'd complain incessantly about the algorithm suppressing their posts or how desperately they want to go viral because it'll help get more exposure to their art. Or even worse, they guilt trip their existing followers saying that because we're not engaging with their posts as much, they're not being fed to the algorithm. And I, this could be a hot take. This could be a controversial take. So don't come at me as if I wasn't once that kind of person because I'm saying this as somebody that used to be that annoying person that complains about the algorithm. I used to do that and sometimes it is annoying because we do need the algorithm but what I'm trying to say is when you bitch about the algorithm instead of nurturing the audience that already exists in your life it can make them feel as if they don't matter and that all your desperate attempts to you know, search for support outside of them can come across as super official clout chasing. Don't get me wrong, going viral is awesome and it can bring a lot of people to your page. But what I've learned over the years from going viral a lot of times is to not chase that high and instead try to connect deeper with your audience. And when I say audience, I mean the people that already follow you, that are already with you, that have been with you throughout the years or however long. I've gone viral for things that have nothing to do with my art. And then people come to my page expecting more of whatever that post was and then they get disappointed when I'm just posting about zines all day. What you want 
to have are followers that are, okay, I can only speak from personal experience, right? Because this is the advice I'm giving that may or may not help you. But I find that I want people to follow me, not for short-lived entertainment that they're gonna see and swipe away and then forget all about me. I want people that are wanting to follow me because they wanna see my creative journey or they just wanna see my life journey and they wanna see my posts about my zines and they wanna know what inspired me to make my work, you know? I want people like that in my circle rather than people that are just there and then just scroll. I really hope that makes sense. I think that when you create content for the algorithm, specifically for the algorithm, you you methodically or like strategically make content that you think the algorithm will like. I'm not talking about when you do all the work to learn about the strategy and you successfully post something and the algorithm picks it up and it boosts your post or whatever and that was the goal. I'm talking about like when you are desperately trying to serve the AI gods and it just doesn't work out in your favor and then you get frustrated with that process that you just keep trying, keep trying. You keep throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping something will stick. I think that when you do that, your work loses its heart. Your posts then become really needy. It comes across as like needy for validation or you, you kind of resemble a, a pitchy car salesman or a solicitor outside of Target that just won't leave you alone. I think that's how your posts come across when you're posting, not for the love of what you just created or you know trying to connect with people, but to gain numbers. I think trying to serve the algorithm too much because like I said it could really help artists and I'm not shitting on the algorithm and saying that it can't benefit us artists it definitely can and it has definitely helped me over the years but what I'm saying is trying to please the algorithm solely like just the algorithm because you're chasing a, a certain amount of numbers or a certain amount of likes I think that really hurts our art and then in turn it hurts our self-esteem I don't want you to make art or zines specifically because this is advice I would give you if you're just starting to make zines for the very first time in 2024 I don't want you to make your zines primarily to please the algorithm because I think it will make your zines really shallow and you know you start carving away pieces and portions of yourself to fit a mold that is not real the algorithm is faulty. They're giving you what you think you may like and sometimes it's hit or miss and a lot of times for me it's miss. I, I get a lot of stuff in my feed that I don't want to see and then I have to actively search for the people that I want to see more in order to see their work. So stop getting so wrapped up in the algorithm. I know it's easier said than done especially if you have a business and art is your job. I know. I just want to help you reclaim your sanity as someone that has fallen in, into that algorithm trap so many times when I first started making art and sharing my zines. I remember the very first time I went viral back in 2020 or 2021. I can't remember when it was, but I ended up burning myself out trying to recreate viral worthy content. What ended up happening to me is that I was trying to make the same viral content over and over again instead of exploring myself deeper, instead of experimenting more with my work. I was trying to make stuff that I knew that the alg algorithm already liked because it told me that it did. This one post went viral. I saw it go viral with my own two eyes and now I'm trying to create more content to match that because that's what I know people like. That hurt my art so bad. I became so annoying. I was posting way too much because I loved that serotonin boost of the algorithm pushing my videos out. It wasn't until I got sick, like literally I got sick. I got physically sick with COVID and so I was forced to stop posting. I was forced to rest because I was posting so much guys. Back in 2020, I was posting like four or five times a day because I was trying to make viral content for the algorithm and it was making me sick. And then I got sick with COVID. And when I say sick, I meant mentally, like I was kind of losing my mind a little bit. Then I got COVID and then I was out for like a month. I had to just rest. And that forced me to take a step back and start reevaluating how I approach the algorithm in tandem with my art. It made me think about what I want as an artist. I want to use the algorithm for good. If the algorithm is going to pick up anything, I want it to pick up the stuff that I actually care about, the stuff that I actually like making. I want to make weird stuff. I want to make different zine formats. I want to explore zines and paper crafts that entertain me and make me laugh. So that's what I started doing. I started making zines for me again instead of for the algorithm. And did my videos consistently go viral? No. 
they didn't. They, they didn't go as viral as they used to, but they were reaching people who align with my true self. And what's better than that? The algorithm will shave off the real you to serve this weird computer. Like, really? Sometimes, and I, I want you to know that the algorithm is helpful for us, but we shouldn't get too carried away with it. You know, we should take our power back from the algorithm. Sometimes I post a zine and it goes viral and that's freaking awesome. But that's not the goal anymore. It used to be the goal, but the goal now is to express myself and to be authentic and hopefully that'll draw people in that F with what I'm doing. That's the biggest piece of advice I would give you as a new zine maker in 2024 is just to make stuff that you like and then share it if you want to share it. Stop counting yourself out as a person, you know? Stop counting yourself out as a supporter of your work. Because when I think about my work, I'm like, I like my zines. I'm a supporter of my zines. I'm a fan of my zines. Before you think about if other people will like your work, ask yourself, do you even like it? Do you like your work? And if you do, that matters. You matter. You matter more than the algorithm says you do. I already know that there's going to be some people that are going to be like, well, Brie, that's easy for you to say because you have this many followers and Instagram or TikTok or whatever. I'm telling you from experience, y'all. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Over the years, what I've learned that helped me keep loyal supporters is just to continue to post what I like. Having followers is great. That also doesn't always convert to the things that you think they may. Like a lot of people, if they have a small business like me, they think having a lot of numbers and a lot of followers converts to a lot of sales. That could not be farther from the truth. You have to learn a lot about marketing. You have to learn a lot about strategy and business and all of that to make that work for you. Numbers at the end of the day are just that, they're numbers. And I wanna connect with the people that I see commenting under my posts every day. The people that swipe up on my stories, the people that vote on my polls, the people that are in my zine club. I want to connect deeper with those instead of trying to find validation and likes and stuff beyond them. The algorithm consistently pushes out shit that is so random. And don't get me wrong, they have drawn in an audience for me, but then I lose a big chunk of that audience because they're not there for whatever I'm doing more consistently. You know, a lot of people have followed me thinking they were going to see stuff about my tattoos because one actually accidental video went viral of me talking about my tattoos and they think I'm a tattoo content person, you know, and then they come to my page and they're just like, what the fuck is a zine? <laughs> yeah. While the algorithm can be great for us artists, I think it's only great if you're being as authentic as you can, because then the algorithm will one day push that stuff. And that's what you want to be pushed, right? All right, folks, I hope that some of these tips will help you on your zine journey. I think I was really cracked out on my Baja Blast. So I do apologize if I was talking pretty erratically. That's just me. I also kind of just talk erratically without the Baja Blast. Maybe I'm using the Baja Blast as an excuse, but just remember, I'm no expert on this stuff. I'm just your friend and I'm just sharing the tips that I wish that I had when I first started making zines, uh, you know, years back. Hopefully this helps you streamline your process and, you know, change your perspective on zine making. It shouldn't always be about having your zines go viral and it shouldn't always be about making money from your zines. It should be about the love of the craft and making friendships in this community and helping other people express themselves just like you're able to express yourself. If you have some zine making advice that you would like to give newbie zine makers, please leave a comment. I think a lot of people do read the comments and it helps them out because uh, if people tell me that and I tell you guys all the time, I read the comments and I'm always moved by what you guys tell me. You guys have such great ideas and you really inspire me. So I know that you'll inspire other people too. I am really excited for 2024. I think a lot more people will start making zines. I've seen a regained popularity in zines recently and I think it's because everything is just so sterile like a lot of what we're being fed and pumped what's being pumped out to us is just so commercialized and it's it's so like cheesy and and just too clean and I think we want more raw janky shit making zines with our hands slowing down being messy and raw and authentic it's bringing us back to something that's real and I think a lot of people are going to be super into that in 2024 so if if you're new to making zines, welcome to the zine community. It's a lot of fun. You, it's very flexible. It's very open. And I hope that you learned something from me today. And if not, that's okay because I know that the comments are very enlightening. Okay, that's it for today's video. Until next time, goodbye.